The state of Colorado has experienced more than 500 earthquakes since 1867. People say, we don't have earthquakes in Colorado, do we? And they're a little bit startled to learn that Colorado has had earthquakes and has had major earthquakes and also has faults that are in the National Earthquake Hazard Map as being capable of generating large earthquakes in the future. Colorado is famous for triggered or induced earthquakes. That is, that humans have done something that have caused an earthquake to go off. So the most notorious ones that occurred at the Rocky Mountain Arsenal during the early 1960s. And there were at least 12 earthquakes that occurred there that did damage in Denver. A lot of people don't realize that we have a lot of natural earthquakes also. Uh, one of those occurred in 1882, and that was the largest earthquake that we have experienced in historic times in Colorado. That was a magnitude 6.6, .6, and it did damage all up and down the Front Range. It was strong enough, even though it was 60 miles away, to knock out power in Denver. The model that the Federal Emergency Management Agency has tells us that if a similar sized 6.6 .6 magnitude earthquake occurred in the same spot today, we would suffer about $2.8 billion in economic loss. The earthquake hazard in Colorado is pretty well distributed across the state with the exception of the northeast part of the state. Uh, we have young faults that are capable of generating large earthquakes over the rest of the three quarters of the state. The Sangre de Cristo Fault, which we're standing on right here, the Southern Sawatch Fault, which runs from Salida up to Buena Vista along the west side of the valley, and the Shiraw Fault, which is out on the plains north of La Junta. We're standing right here on the Northern Sangre de Cristo Fault, and this fault is one of the major faults in the entire state of Colorado. What it separates is the crest of the mountain range here on the Sangre de Cristo from the same rocks that are buried about 10 to 15,000 feet below the valley floor out here. You notice how the ground slopes very gently up towards where I'm standing right here, and then suddenly it jumps up about six or eight feet, and then it flattens out at that same gradient that we have right here. What this tells us is that a fault has displaced the ground surface from here up to that level behind me. We can't really walk up and put our finger exactly where that fault is on that little steep escarpment there. But there is a way that we can find out exactly where it is. If we get a backhoe, dig a trench across this scarp about 10 feet deep, we would be able to see in the third dimension and find exactly where that fault is. And then we could tell something about when it occurred and how much displacement actually occurred on it. This is a very typical uh, looking fault zone in a trench wall, and we knew the fault was somewhere in the vicinity of this steep six foot drop off here we call the scarp. And sure enough, the fault which created the escarpment is exposed right here. We can tell it's the fault because these flat rocks, which everywhere else in the trench are lying flat, have all been rotated to nearly vertical by the fault, and it's basically chopped off all these strata that are over here and in the upper part of the trench and dropped them down to the right-hand side of the trench about six feet. And that's what caused this six-foot-high little hill that we trenched across. Some people tend to think about faults moving slowly over time, but you're telling me that this probably occurred very quickly in a minute or so, this whole six-foot offset that generated a large earthquake. In the western United States in the last 50 or 60 years, there have been a dozen of these kind of magnitude seven-ish earthquakes that have ruptured to the surface, and when they do, they create a vertical wall of dirt here where the upthrown side is jacked up uh, above the downthrown side. And it looks just like this. If you dig a trench across those things the day after they happen, those trench walls look exactly like this one. Tell us how you're gonna figure out when that earthquake actually occurred. Well, we look for the uh, soil horizon that was on the ground surface the day before the earthquake that had been forming for many hundreds and thousands of years. We can actually see the soil that was existing before this earthquake happened. It's right here and it's buried by all of these large rocks that fell off the oversteep and scarp face 
and they fell off onto the soil. So all we are gonna try to do is radiocarbon date that piece of soil and we'll figure out when the earthquake happened. And then we can figure out what the average time span is between each of those big earthquakes. If we know when the last one happened, we can estimate when the next one will happen. About how much time do we find happens between major earthquakes? According to the data we have, about seven to 10,000 years between these big magnitude seven earthquakes. And based on previous trenching, the last earthquake happened about 7,000 years ago. Okay, so we're coming into a period where we might expect one uh, any time between now and the next 3,000 years. That's right, we're, we're more than halfway through the cycle. We may be three quarters of the way through the cycle. We may be 85% of the way through the cycle, but we're nearing the end as opposed to being in the beginning. It's important to remember that the length of time that Dr. McAlpin was talking about pertains to this one particular fault in Colorado. And we have hundreds of faults throughout the state, and you can see from the various colors here, which are keyed to the last time that we know that they moved. And even if individual faults have recurrence intervals of a thousand years or more, when you look at the hundreds of faults that we have in the state, then it is a much shorter period of time when we might expect a large earthquake to occur somewhere within the state. What's important for hazard mitigation people and emergency managers to be aware of how much damage can occur in their area should the earthquake occur. We don't know when or where the next earthquake occurs, but as geologists we know there are going to be other major earthquakes in the future just like we've had them in the past. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, has developed a very sophisticated model where we can put in an earthquake epicenter at any particular place in the state, assign it a magnitude, and it will give you an idea of the damage and where that damage will occur. So it's great for tabletop planning exercises, and it helps people to understand how extensive the damage can be and how major the damage can be. We have some other tools that mitigation folks can use. We have an online earthquake and fault server that will show you where the young faults are in the state that we know of. They also will show you where the historic earthquakes are located that have occurred. You can mouse over an earthquake and see the magnitude and the date that it occurred. You can mouse over the faults and see the name of the fault. If you double click on the fault, it'll bring up a sheet that tells you everything that's in the literature about that fault. We also have an earthquake reference collection. That's over 500 publications that have uh, articles relative to earthquakes in Colorado. And many of those are actually online. And it's my opinion that emergency managers, if they're ready to handle an earthquake, they can handle any natural hazard that the state can provide for them. As far as individual homeowners, there are simple things that you can do that don't cost a lot of money. One of the most important is to be sure to check your hot water heater if it's gas to see that it is secured so that it won't fall over and break a gas pipeline and start a fire. Well, statistically, if an earthquake occurs, you're most likely to be in your bed. So don't hang heavy pictures over the head of your bed. Don't have a shelf that has heavy pots sitting on it that could fall off and uh, hit you on the head and seriously injure you. These don't cost anything and they're very simple uh, mitigation measures that you can take to protect yourself should an earthquake occur in your area. Keeping yourself and your family safe in an earthquake is everybody's responsibility. And we have brochures at the Colorado Geological Survey that are free or you can read them online. If you want more information on earthquakes in Colorado, just go to www.colorado.gov geosurvey.